You know, one of the things about marketing that I think defeats people and depletes them is this constant, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this. And it's always this multi-pronged approach that kind of feels like you're just being packed to death by, you know, a thousand ends. And so when Claudia and I talk about marketing, we really try to focus on strengths and with her um, clients and with my clients. And then when we work together, we focus on strengths. So what would it be like for you to focus on your strengths in your marketing? And do you even know what your strengths are? And then how do you give yourself permission to do that and to have a more streamlined marketing approach? That's what I'm going to pick Claudia's brain about today. Hi, Claudia. Hi, lovely. How are you doing? I'm good. Are there there any brains left though? (laughs) I'm going to pick your brains, but I know that you're a little depleted from your computer dying. Well, no problem. This will really charge me because, uh, as you know, um, I am a, a, a. My philosophy is that marketing has to be in alignment with who you are, and if you try to do things that are not in your style or what you call the strengths, then marketing will be a constant upstream fight. Oh, I like that, <laughs> and that's what it feels like—a constant upstream yes, fight. Yes. And you know, and since marketing is one of the pillars of your business growth, uh, then. It's ideal that we find a way that works in alignment and in harmony with us. So, you know, like you don't look like, ah, marketing again, but you are really charged and and enthusiastic about the marketing. And the trick is um, finding a strategy that goes with with your natural strengths or your, your personality. Mm -hmm. So when you, when we, let's just like talk about you for a second, because you're a marketing expert. Marketing is just so natural to you. It's almost like breathing marketing to you. I had, did not have that experience. I had to learn how to become a good marketer. So when, what would you say after doing all of the learning that you've done and leaning into your natural abilities, what have you found is your natural marketing style? Well, I've, what I enjoy most is one-on-one conversations. Mm -hmm. So also because I'm a very intuitive person, when I connect one-on-one, I can combine my, my marketing expertise with what my intuition is telling me. And intuition is normally what is not being said, that you can still pick it up from, from, you know, from the words or precisely what's not being said. So m- the marketing that works for me is the marketing, the strategy that allows me to create this one-on-one conversations. This is one of the best examples of one-on-one conversations, though it's not client-related, but it's peer-related. So, you know, when you and I meet to talk about marketing, um, I am at my best. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my knowledge comes naturally out. Uh, I can think on my feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my um, answers are spontaneous, and my real personality comes through these talks. Well, when I write, which I enjoy, but it's not my favorite. And you're good at, but you and you're good at it too. Yes, I am more formal because I really think of, that's my my communication background. I really think about what I want to say, and that <clears throat> sparkly or naughty part of my personality really dilutes when I write. Yes. So uh, the, then, when people see my writings, they might learn a lot, but they might think, "Oh my God, that's the most disciplined." strict person in the world well it's not the case so writing is is good for me Uh, it helps me because i also love unraveling marketing and and solving people's problems so that works good for me but it's not my main strategy my main strategy is here to have this one-on-one conversations i what i love is that you said I know that I do really well with my intuition. I can help people through my intuition, but the only way you can do that is with a one-to-one conversation or a small group. So you know that being in front of, like being on a stage is not a marketing strategy that you're interested in no, like being, being one of your primary things. Yes, because on one, side, on one hand, I have two things working against me. I love watching people do their thing. So you, you, do. you do. In a large room, I will stand in a corner to go and notice to see people do their thing. And on the other hand, because I am so intuitive, being in a large room with a lot of people, it's a lot of stimulus for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't then I am very confused and I block myself. So definitely, you know, when I go to networking, that's why I'm happy 
with COVID because <laughs> you know. we're networking one on one online. And when I go to events, I really get home exhausted and very barely made any new connections. Most probably, I what I did is refresh existing connections or cu caught up with people I already knew. But that's why for me it's so important to generate this one-on-one -on -one conversations because if I only had these large things, my business would have died a long, long ago. time ago. You know, the other thing about a one-to-one -one connection is um, you could get on a discovery call with somebody. And I know that when you do these calls, you can pinpoint somebody's, the holes in their marketing and help them plug the holes through the one-to-one -one conversation and your intuition. But then the other thing that happens is when you develop these relationships, because that's your strength, people refer people to you. You have yeah. to work with Claudia, you have to meet her. And so I think, especially in the online world, a lot of us are discounting the importance of that one to one that it's 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 a marketing spoke that many people are not even thinking about using at this point. Yes, well, one thing is that um, it's it's ironic because a lot of people say, "Oh, I would love people to refer my business," you know, and referral is a form of one on one marketing. Yes, yes, but people leave referral to. A coincidence, you know, to the goodwill of other people to refer you. And referral is something you have to include in your marketing strategy and you have to make it happen. Very rarely it will happen spontaneously like it goes with you because you're so generous also with, uh, you know, pushing other people's success. But <clears throat> the, the thing with, with referrals is that you really need to to still to, to connect with the other person and 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 have this exchange and that's how the relationship is grown well liz just asked a really great question in the comments which is this is how she has done business for 30 years she knows this is a strength of hers and but how do you get that done online um well one thing I want to add to the first remark, uh, because I have to admit, I lost the, the track of my thought while I was talking, is when you do one-on-one, -on -one, most probably the speed at which your business grows is somewhat slower. Yes. So you need to understand that, you know, that if you choose one strategy, it might impact the, the, the speed with which you grow. How do you do it all? Yes. I want to just add to that. It might be slower, but I think it's more sustainable if that's your strength, that yes. you're not going to go whoop and then oh, I can't do this anymore. And so it might feel feel slower, but it's certainly more sustainable. Yes. And it's more solid because you really create this relationship with your clients. You yes. really know them well yes. and then you can help them on a really long term because you yes. know their struggle, you know, yes. you can create a plan and, and they, they understand that you understand them or you figure out, you figure them out without even needing to talk. So that's it. So for some people, that's very nice when they have a hard time putting their feelings or their, their emotions into words. Going back to Liz's questions, um, I have, for instance, uh, a 20 minute free consultation where I solve one of one marketing problem you have. So in, I do it um, with the idea of getting, um, information or input for blogs or for for content oh yeah yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time i help people to move on with a problem they've been sitting on for quite some time but the thing is because i am there with my five senses i really see more happening than only the topic they are bringing because let's for instance uh, what happens is problem is not an isolated thing so people tend to see the, the point of the iceberg in the problem. And they solve that, for instance, with a freebie, they can solve the, but then they discover there is more thing. So if in a, in a conversation you lay them out, okay, this is the problem you have, but you want to get here, this is the path you have to go. So it doesn't end with solving the problem. You will have, you have more steps and you can do that in the conversation. Right. So you're so sometimes you'll get on a call with somebody and you'll say, this is the thing that's causing you the pain right now, but this is actually where it's started. And we can solve for this, but it's going to keep happening if you don't solve for this. 
Yes. So for yeah, instance, a lot of people know that I help them to figure out their signature solution, right? Mm -hmm. So they come to me and say, can you help me with a signature solution? I don't have a signature solution or if I tried it and it's not working. So when we go deeper in the conversation, I understand they don't have clarity on their buying persona and the message to the market isn't clear either. Right. If you don't have those two clear, your signature system or your signature solution won't do the heavy lifting for your business because the foundation of it, it's already rocky. So when you tell them, this is the reason why your signature solution is not working or why you cannot come up with a signature solution that is appealing to you, then they understand they have to take a step back. So I mm -hmm. solved the problem in the sense that I gave them clarity and they understand the roadmap to solve the problem, you know, and that, that tells them, okay, she understands my problem. She can really help me throughout my, my entire thing. So let's talk about some other strengths that people can play off of that you've seen when you work with people. Cause not everybody's a one-to-one -one person. Not everybody wants to do 20 minute calls or builds those long-term relationships. Yeah. Well, in, in my time working with entrepreneurs, um, I've identified four styles. You know, for strengths, you have the two extremes with this uh, introvert and extrovert. So the two classical extremes, you know, and then you will have the less introvert and the less extrovert. So you would have person to person, which is my style and tribal, which is um, something between person to person and extrovert. So, for instance, tribal is people who loves groups and loves small community because creating the relationship for them is important but they have this ability of being in a group like for instance you have with a membership even though you're a person, -to -person you have very strong uh, um, characteristics of a tribal person because you are very good at communities i've seen you in other groups and and you know how to manage that very well so a tribal person is somebody who enjoys groups and can help talk to more people at the same time. So for instance, forums or groups or, or memberships are the best place for them to find out because they will be in a group of like-minded people. Okay. So for example, would a tribal person, like let's use me as an example as a tribal, I have a strength of tribal um I have a tribal strength. So one of the things that I like to do is offer a free training, not a webinar, but a true training for people where they see the value, they are able to do something and they walk away. But I can manage the group while I'm teaching, which I've, I've learned a lot of people can't do that. I think that's just from being a high school teacher. You can, you can manage a lot of things at the same time. So um, is that an example of using my tribal strength to uh, connect with others? Yes, you. what you are doing here is com combining your experience as a teacher with your natural strengths of being a tribal person. Okay. Because being a teacher allows you to manage the group. But the tribal person allows you to identify the common issue in the group and okay. finding how to manage the group and keep the group uh, unified. Right, so, right, 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 right. So it's that combination, okay. it's that combination of your, your, your teaching background with your natural strength of you know being in groups i love but this I idea of a... how would you react if i throw you to a podium or you know speaking gig or something where you don't have the direct input from other people so it's more like a sea of people i don't like that and it's That's why I don't like doing Facebook lives. I much prefer to do our conversations like this. Like I will have a conversation all day long, but I really don't like getting on a Facebook live because it feels like I open it up. I am just like, I might as well open the window and yell out to the window. It feels, there's no um, pushback for me, right? So that's a way that I have learned to use my strengths. Exactly. And for instance, my strength of being uh, more rich in my communication through talking is also these conversations. You know, so it's, uh, for instance, extroverts, they shine on a podium. They don't need, what they need is the general energy of a group. Mm. They, you know, the, 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 the sea of people looking at them and following every uh, gesture they do or everything they do. I but love that. People, 
tribal people need a more uh, shorter line of connection with the oh people God. they serve. That is the perfect way to say it. Like I need a, I need a shorter tether. Yes. yes. So, oh but so introverts, that. for instance, they can be very close. You have people, but they don't want the pressure of the response. Okay. So they can have a very short line, but they don't like the thing of, okay, I'm waiting for your answer. So for instance, introverts uh, could use social media that have a different pace. For instance, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more formal, doesn't have yes. that pressure. Um, you know, it's it's more like you can take a step back, think your answer, and and and, and reply. Uh, email marketing is also a, a good thing for for introverts because they can think beforehand. But videos, for instance, are ideal for extroverts because they don't need the direct feedback from somebody else looking at them. This is so much. I like the fact that you're putting all of this into, I feel like I knew this, but I have never had the vocabulary or the um, containers to put this into. So, it, it, you know, when the moment you, you know what you are, then you can create and you combine it with your business goals, then you can say, okay, if this is what I want to achieve, and this is my strength or my style, it's easy for you to decide, okay, this is where I am going to put uh, my efforts, you know, LinkedIn is the place for me because also because my people isn't there. But but then you see um, how how to um, talk or use social media or, or other vehicles. So somebody said, um, I can't, it won't show me who the name is, but as a more introverted person, I prefer talking into stories exactly. because getting the responses in the DMs, this person can reply at their own pace. No, that's exactly what we just said before. You know, you can take your time to 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 reply to them in a way that you don't feel the pressure. So I love this. Exactly, that, that, that is exactly what happens with introverts, yes. Love this. And then here's another one. It makes sense about the emails. I need to do more with my email list because it would work for my introverted preferences. And I hear from so many people that email is dead. People are not checking their emails. Email is not dead. It is such a great way for those people who really want to get to you from that platform. So imagine for this person, if they used stories and email together, how that could be powerful and then let go of something that's not working so that you have yeah. the energy. Oh, hi, Katie. So you have the energy to stop um, doing all the so shit that doesn't work. That, that you bring for, that we bring forward emails because email marketing is one of the few marketing tactics that work for most mm. everybody. So it works for introverts because they can really think uh, their um, their message and their reaction, and they can plan in advance and roll it out in advance. But for instance, you, you're a genius at typing emails for your groups in a whim. Okay? You. So you really connect and you use your email to keep close to the people you are already serving. You know, and you use it as a reminder, but you also use it as bringing food for thought. So it's, a, it's an ideal vehicle depending on how you manage it or, or you know if you are somebody who does in the whim of a moment or you want to plan more your stuff i love this. i have very hard time with email marketing and it's the best asset an email list is the best asset you can have yeah um, but i am so very bad because if i don't get the reaction from people then I become demotivated. That is hard. I will say over the past four weeks, I've been doing a whole email series on de debunking the myths of my latest launch, like kind of like the secrets from inside my launch. And I've had like great things happen, but depleting things happened. And every week I've been really giving away these this information. And it is the most feedback I've ever gotten from my list. My list is often very quiet. Even if I ask a question, they don't often respond to me. But when I'll like see somebody or get on the phone with somebody who is on my email list, they'll always comment on my email. So people are not necessarily ignoring them or not responding, uh, but I'm um, sorry, they are not ignoring them, but they're uh, they absorbing them, but they don't necessarily respond. And it is very hard to stay motivated to keep going. I, I can see that. 
that trend is also happening in social media. We've discussed yes. this in, in previous uh, conversations yes. where we talk about voyeurism. You know, you yes. have to yes. that all of a sudden say, oh, I've been following you for ages and I love this piece about you and you are like woman. <laughs> No. Thumbs up would have helped. <laughs> I think that you opened your mouth before. But yes, yeah, so that also speaks to how important is consistency yes. in marketing. You know, so if you put all these elements together, consistency as the pillar, how can you guarantee that you will be consistent is when you play to your strengths. Yes. Oh, so I love that. This is a great place. When you play to your strengths, then marketing becomes a less heavy thing. And, yes. you know. You, you are content creation is also a relatively easier thing there as well. So if if we can leave people with one thing, um, it's important to know your strengths. And Claudia actually has a quiz. Is your quiz live yet for this? Yes, yes, it's live. Okay. Um, so I'll put the link in the comments. Um, so you can take a quiz to figure out what your strengths are. The other thing is, which what we're talking about, once you know your strengths, it's easier to stay consistent. Claudia helps on the marketing strategy side, helping you create your signature system. And I do the same thing with my clients um, because you have to know your content style. You have to know where to be and what to say in a way that feels good for you. So knowing your strengths is so huge because then you can let go of the guard, like, like reels. I have no interest in reels. I have no interest in spending time learning them. I, I'm sure they would be wonderful, but like, it's just not a strength of mine, but I will give a free training every single week if you wanted me to right? like and for some people that would be like the death knell for them exactly. yeah and so you just have to know your strengths and play to them so, you know for instance you are great at creating trainings and and carrying them out and implementing i am better at being asked questions yeah uh, like giving you an answer like that that's where i shine at my best so you know you need to find because what interesting about the, the the content thing is knowing your style allows you to have the same shape everywhere and in yes. that way you protect your brand and in that way you're also consistent so every time people comes in contact with your brand you are the same shape you are always I love that. bringing that 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 thing that makes you 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 so I'm going to ask everybody, there's been so much gold in this conversation. If you have any questions and you're watching this in the future, tag Claudia and tag me. We can answer your questions. What are your strengths? Do you know them? And then think about like, oh my God, how good would it feel to only do this thing? I'm like, just to even be on this call with you, Claudia, and say, I really love training. I will do trainings every single week and to not ever think about reels. It's just like so energizing for me. And so I would love for other people to kind of put their oxygen mask on, give themselves permission and stay in the lane of the thing that they love. Definitely, yeah. Oh, so beautiful. I put your bridge to more.com. Can they get the, the, the quiz right yes, from there, from your homepage? It's in, the resources. it's in the resources menu and in the homepage. Okay, perfect. Send the home page. And then I actually opened up my um, membership till the till I think it's November uh, uh, the fourth, September fourth, for people who are like, oh, I'm really ready to get some help. So there's I put a new uh, link to that if you want to join my membership too. So um, I hope this has been helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, Claudia. Do you have any last thoughts? Um, well, if you consider seriously to join the membership because it has really improved the way I you know I generate content. It has oh, been really. Oh, thank you. And I will say, get on a call with Claudia because she can help you in 20 minutes in a way that is really impressive. So thank you for showing up, everybody. And thanks, Claudia, for coming. I hope I didn't pick your brains out <laughs> too much. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <Thank> <laughs>